Hi, and welcome to another episode of D-Link TV q and I'm Mike, and I'm here with George. And we're here to answer your questions. Uh, if you take and point your browser to www.dlinktv.com, there's a little web form that you can fill out on the top of the page, and we will uh, answer your questions right here. There you go. So today we're going to do another one of our like mismatch of questions. We got a bunch of random questions in, so we're just going to take some weird ones. What do we got? We got assorted questions. That's what we're going to do, assorted questions. Here we go. Okay, so Emmanuel in Bowie, Maryland asks, he's trying to log into his D-Link router, but he doesn't remember the default username and password and wants to know if we can help. There you go. I think we're the people. There you go. <clears throat> well, by default, most of the D-Link routers have the username is admin by default, and the password is blank. Just hit return, and it should get you in. Right. If that doesn't work, then that means you probably were being good and listening and putting a password on it, which right. we strongly recommend. However, you didn't follow the other part of the instructions and write it down. Right. You take and put it on a post-it note and stick it right to the bottom of the router. You can even write it in marker on the bottom of the router if you like, because you can if somebody looks at it and finds it, well, you've got bigger problems. Yeah, that means somebody's inside <clears throat> of your house. Right. So, but if if you're if you go and you and it is admin blank, that means you haven't been following directions. Naughty, naughty. And you need to <laughs> so. immediately go to uh, set up admin. Uh, what is it under tools? Admin. Right under and tools, there's admin, and then you can set a password, and it can be pretty much anything you want. But make it something that you can remember. That's not password. That isn't really a whole lot better than nothing. Right. But <clears throat> if you do have a password on your router right. and you uh, don't know what it is, you can use one of these little guys, which is the DRT1000. That's the D-Link reset tool. And right on the back of the router here, there's a little reset switch. You push that in and hold it in for about 10 seconds, pop it out, and it'll reset it back to factory defaults. Which means it's just like it came out of the box, which means it probably isn't going to be set up the way you want it to. You're going to have to reconfigure your wireless and all that stuff. So if somebody else, you know, a family or a friend or somebody set it up for you, try and get a hold of them first to, you know, try and see if they remember what it one is. One thing to keep in mind is you can keep trying the password. It's not like after three tries it locks you out and you're screwed for life. You yeah. can keep give trying. Give it a few tries. And so, you know, give it a guess. It's sort of an entertaining game. Think of what you might have called it. Right. Um, it'll probably get old in a hurry. And by the way, please don't try to order the DRT-1000. It's really a paper it's clip. It's just right a paper now. clip. <laughs> uh, you know, but most of our products, even like this print server here that we'll talk about next, it has a reset on it as well. So if one of your products you do lose the password for or something like that, you know, just give it a reset. So, and then once you do get it configured, go through, do all your settings, put a password in there, set up wireless with security and a password. Yep. And write it down. Write it down on the bottom. Of and it. then the thing you can do is you go under tools, and under tools it's either system or admin, depending on the device. Right. You can save configuration. It'll write a file that brings up a little um, window that says where do you want to save it, and it's a configuration file. And just save it somewhere under you know my documents, wherever you're going to remember it. You can even write it off to a flash key, or if you've got an old enough computer, put it on a floppy. Yep. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big file, but it'll have all your configuration information. That way, if in the future you need to go and reset the thing, you can just go and download the new configuration because that same screen has a uh, reload configuration box where it's got a browse button. Mm -hmm. And so in that yep. case, you don't have to go back through trying to set up because if it's DSL, you've got to set up your PPPOE settings with a username and account. And if you didn't write down your password, you may not have written those down either. Right. <laughs> so okay. write this stuff down. It'll help you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that takes care of that. Uh, Elaine in Rockport, Mass. Uh, asks, she has a desktop and a notebook computer and a D-Link router, and she wants to know how she can print from the notebook using the wireless connection. So I'm taking she has a, a wireless router with the computer's probably hardwired, and the notebook is wireless. And right. so she's going to want to uh, print. So there's a couple of ways to do that. Right. So you can either, you, you might be able to set up sharing in the printer from your desktop machine. And it right. depends on you know, what operating system you're running. One of the big drawbacks to that is that means you always have to have the PC running. Right. The computer is going to have to be running right. for the laptop to print something off of it. And so that's probably not your best choice. Right. Um, we're assuming that your printer is plugged into your wired network, you know, into probably one of the wired ports on your router. And so there's a couple of options at that point. You can either set up a wireless print server, which allows you to put the printer wherever you want it, which might be more convenient. Something so, like the something DPR like this 1260. One right here. This right. is the DPR-1260. That's a, a four port, so you can actually plug up to four right. USB printers into this, this And that one. can be either wired or wireless. Right. And yeah, the beauty of this one is it'll support the multifunction printer. So say you've got one that's also a scanner. Printer scanner, yeah. Then Facts. this way you can also do the scanning, which is where the printer's talking back to the computer. And that only a small number of the print servers on the market actually support that. 
because it's more complicated because the printers aren't all the same. Right. And so if you want to do that, check the product page for the DPR 1260 if you've got a multifunction printer and make sure your printer is listed on the supported printers list. Because since we have to go and test every single one of these printers to make sure that they work, because of the fact that there isn't a standard communication protocol. Right. Now, we, we make multiple print servers. Right. We, got, you, we got, even have ones with parallel ports on them, I believe, mm -hmm. still. Uh, but if you don't you know, need something with four USB ports on it, you're not going to plug in four printers. You're just going to plug in one. We have other products like the DP301U. Right. So I would go to the website, uh, click on products, and then go print to the print server list. category so that you can you know, see the list because some of them support other printers. Right. Than, and there's you know. wired and wireless, and there's different price points because this, the DPR1260 is a top-of-the-line print server, so it's going to cost more because it does a lot more. Right. And so you've got some trade-offs you can make. So take a look at those because it'll probably solve your problem. Absolutely. And that's how you get it done. Uh, okay, Steve in Cedar Rapids, Iowa asks, will the draft-in routers be usable when the standards is complete? And then the follow-up is, when will the 802.11n standard be complete? There you go. This, this is a pretty common question. And yes, they, the routers that you buy now will be continue to be usable. We offer firmware and driver updates going forward as the standard changes or as we add new features. And so you can continue to check. We always, we always recommend Periodically go and check for firmware driver updates. If, you, you know, if you're having an issue, go out and check first. There may be a new firmware out there that will fix your problem. Right. But the firmware is continually updated to offer new features or a new certification. You know, like the Draft 2.0 certification the Wi-Fi Alliance is doing, right. which you know, this, the DR655, among others, has passed. There's firmware out there that is you know, fully compliant with the current draft. And so, yes, the routers will continue to be useful going forward. Absolutely. Well, the... Uh, the important thing to point out is the when the draft 2.0 of the standard, uh, you know, was ratified, um, was kind of a coming together of all of the different companies on, on an agreement. Before the draft 2.0, there was a lot of, you know, back and forth on, you know, how the standard was going to be. But the draft 2.0 was where everybody came together and decided on on a firm. So the only things that are going to be changed now are just little tweaks here and there that can be done with firmware. And the Wi-Fi Alliance is an independent organization that is doing testing of each of these products from our company and others to make sure that they interoperate. Right. So that way you know, say, you know, down the line you're going to get a new laptop, might have wireless built in, draft in. You want to make sure it's going to work with your router. Right. And so by buying products that are certified, you're confident that they're going to continue working. So what so, I would do is, is, you know, just like when you go to buy a car or anything else, do a little bit of background research and make sure that the the router that you're buying, you know, the adapters, you know, that match our draft 2.0. Right. You know, and, and you'll you'll find that on our website and things like that. And then the second part of your question, when will the standard be finalized? The final publication is scheduled for late next year. The reason for the big delay is the process that the IEEE goes through. Once the standard's completely done <clears throat> as far as technical changes, then it has to go through another couple layers of getting integrated into the overall standard and then blessed by a couple of other groups because it's truly an international standard. So yeah, you know, this isn't, of, you know, right. like some city government deciding this is how we're going to do something. This yeah. is a global, you know, standard where, you know, all around the world, everybody has to agree on, you know. And the process does take time. Yeah. And so it's getting close at the point that it currently stands. The experts believe that it's very stable and the changes going forward should be quite minor. And we're confident that we'll be able to support those with firmer updates. Right. So. Thank you for asking and for being an interested in the product. So go out and buy a DR655. It's a yeah, great product. It, it is a really good router. Uh, it there it is, <laughs> and it's white. Uh, so that takes care of it for our, our mismatch of products, our assorted questions. <clears throat> um, well, thank you for watching. Yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and point your browser to www.dlinktv.com. Fill out the little web form, and we'll answer your question right here. There you go. Thank you. Thank you.